Most of Europe's top young drivers are going in the race. We're all set for the start. So let's now join Murray Walker to set it all up for us. Over to Murray Walker for the start. This Marlborough Daily Express International Trophy Formula 2 race for two-litre single-seater cars is going to be an extremely interesting and exciting one, not just because of the drivers and the cars and the fact that many of the cars are brand new, but because of this, the weather. Earlier, it has been raining at Silverstone. Now the sky has cleared, the sun is shining, but the circuit is wet in patches and dry in patches. The drivers have had the agonising decision about whether to fit slick tyres like this, which, as you can see, offer virtually no grip in wet conditions, and hope that the course will dry out. And there, as you look at the grid, you see how wet and shiny it still is, or whether to fit wet weather tyres and hope it will stay wet. Well, they have all opted, without exception, to fit slick tyres, which means to say that the opening laps are going to be extremely slippery. This is the commencement of the warm-up lap, and the drivers will now have the opportunity to work out the conditions for themselves. What is it going to be like, Tiffany Dell? Yes, very, very tricky, Murray. You've, you've got to take it so easily under these conditions. The race is going to be won in the, in the second half of the race when the track is dry, and they'll be able to use their dry tyres and it's just going to be so important in these opening 10 laps not to do anything silly and spin off, and, uh, but also, of course, to maintain the pace, to stay up with the leaders. And they've just got to feel the cars and uh, stay on the track. The cars very hard suspension with these ground-effect Formula 2 cars, and they're very stiffly sprung, which makes it even worse in the wet. So uh, it's going to be a very interesting opening laps. Because these Formula 2 cars have, uh, have ground effects, that is to say, skirts as a result of which the cars are sucked down towards the ground, they therefore hold the ground better and are very nearly as fast as the Formula 1 Grand Prix cars at the moment. The situation will change next year, but this year and today we have the enormously exciting prospect of a very fast race and a completely new lineup at the front because sensationally yesterday 20 year old dave scott the englishman in his march bmw car was not only fastest for pole position on the grid but has shattered brian hinton's 1980 lap record of one minute 19.1 with a time of one minute 16.9 a speed of 137.3 miles an hour Alongside him on the wet and slippery grid is Mike Thackwell, the young New Zealand driver. In fact, he is only 21 years old, the youngest man ever to start a Grand Prix, which he did for the Tyrrell team in Canada. He had a terrible season in Formula 2 last year, but now is back in the Rolt Honda team, for which he drove in 1981, with a great deal to prove. Beppe Gabbiani, who is third fastest, is an Italian who drove in the Osella Formula One team last year and has gone back to Formula Two. Jonathan Palmer has got a Williams Formula One Grand Prix testing contract, and for that matter, Dave Scott has got a Lotus Formula One Grand Prix testing contract. You can see that the conditions are absolutely appalling for slick tyres. Jonathan Palmer, Britain's hope for Formula One Grand Prix racing, the drivers, are practicing racing starts under these bad conditions as they come up to the line. Thierry Tessin is a Belgian in a March BMW engine car. Indeed, all the cars in this race have German BMW four-cylinder double overhead camshaft engines, except the two Rolt Hondas of Thackwell and Palmer, which have Honda V6 engines. Alain Ferté is in sixth position, and it's a 47-lap race. And it is go, and a very slippery go, and Dave Scott is left on the line. Dave Scott is very badly left on the line, and he's going into Cox virtually last. But it is Thackwell leading, Mike Thackwell, number nine in the Rolt Honda V6, is leading round the right hand at Cox. Now watch them as they are fighting for grip in these opening laps as they go round Maggots, down to Beckett's, it's Gabbiani in second place, in the March BMW. It's one of the Maurers, it's Beloff in third position, I believe, the German who won last year in very, very wet conditions. There is one of the Minardis, number 11 of Oscar Lorari, the European Formula 3 champion. And there's, there's the first casualty, 
of the conditions and it's Kenny Atchison's Maura. Kenny Atchison who had such an appalling season in terms of luck last year. Now they're slithering round Stowe and Bebby Gabioni on lap one. And off there, there's another one. Look at his rear wheels, it's Thomas Kaiser in the Maura. And there is one of the Mezzario cars. It's Fulvio Balabio, the Italian driver. So there's three of them off in the first lap. Thomas Kaiser is struggling in, and Beppe Gaviani is really pressing on. Lap one, 46 to go at the end of this one, and off goes Alio. That's Philippe Alio in the only martini, and a masterly recovery. A complete 360-degree spin into Woodcote. Lap one, the leader is... Gabbiani, second is Thackwell. In third position it is Ferte. In fourth position it's Palmer. And in fifth position it's Beloff. In sixth position it is the Argentine driver, Enrique Mancilla. And now I think, Tiff, that Gabbiani has got an advantage with a clear road and clear vision. Yes, it's going to be help. We've, we've already seen just how treacherous these conditions are. A lot of little bumps have obviously happened. There now. So, Gabbiani in the lead and uh, hopefully pulling away from Thackwell who's been pressured very, very hard there by Alain Ferte in the Mara, one of the German Maras on Michelin tyres, teammate of uh, last year's winner, Stefan Belloff. Well, the interesting thing now is that the two V6 Rolt Hondas are in second and fourth positions. There is the second place man, the distinctive red helmet with the white tee of Mike Thackwell, son of ex-speedway rider and New Zealand gold miner Ray Thackwell. There's Gabbiani leading. Here are Thackwell second. Behind Thackwell is Ferte, the man who won the Monaco Formula 3 race last year and in 1981. Then Jonathan Palmer in the second of the two Rorts. These have got very powerful engines, the Rorts. The Honda V6 engine has got something like a 20 horsepower advantage. And off onto the grass, moment, there's Kaiser touring in. Off into the grass, momentarily, went Ferte, which allowed Jonathan Palmer to close up a bit. But at the end of lap two, with 45 to go, it is still Gabbiani leading. Fackwell second, Ferte third, Palmer fourth, Beloff is in fifth position. Then Philippe Alio is in sixth place. And in sixth, seventh and eighth place, it's Mansilla and Philippe Strike. Well, what's the trick, Tiff, in these conditions to keep the car on the island? Well, I think Beppe Gabbiani now, one of the most experienced drivers in this field. He's done Formula One for a couple of years with Osella. He's now really going to make the break. He's got a perfect opportunity. In these conditions, it's actually easier to pull out more time in the dry you know you can chip away at tents but if you drive well under these conditions you can benefit by seconds and seconds and if he can leave these others to to have a, a race for second third and fourth place now and get on his own and get away he could build a very very big lead which the others will find it hard to chip back when the track dries out there's Beckwell, but in the lead Gaviani, who has minimal hips and the most enormous shoulders and biceps on him like an ox and uh, he's the man number one who comes from Milan there he is Exocella Formula One driver very wealthy man and he has the advantage this year of having the sage advice of ex Formula One Grand Prix winner Peter Gethin who is his race engineer and advisor and has told him to Drive like an Englishman and think like an Italian, whatever that means. Well, Gabbiani seems to be putting it into effect now. Look at the lead he has. Mike Thackwell there in second position. And this is lap four that we're on. Now, Jonathan Palmer in the spray there has closed up. There he is in the hot, in the Honda powered room. Has closed up to the ex Formula 3 driver in the European Championship, Alain Ferte in the Maura. So it's a March BMW leading. Then it's a Rolt, then it is this Maurer, then it is that Rolt. So Rolts are in second and fourth positions. In fifth position, behind Jonathan Palmer, it is Stefan Beloff. There he is. With the, there is Beloff. That's the man who won last year in the appallingly wet conditions, who had a terrible practice day yesterday with a persistent misfire. And he told me this morning that he thought they had traced it, and he was very well up in the warm-up. 
Indeed, he was second fastest to Jonathan Palmer in the warm-up, and he's closing up on the Englishman. The tall, languid, 25-year-old Stefan Beloff from Gießen in Germany, the man who won his first Formula One race ever, is chasing number eight, Jonathan Palmer, for fourth position. Well, Mike Thackwell here now, he's decided to let the dice be for third place and not second, and he's got his head down, and he's chasing hard after Pepe Gabbiani. It's amazing how quickly they're actually coming out of the chicane, which they're now approaching. You can see it's very, very wet through the chicane, through this area of the track, and yet they're really getting the power down. Only now, those two dry lines beginning to appear where the slick tyres can get some grip. And there is doubt about Stefan Beloff's position, and off at the Woodcote there has gone Philippe Alio in the brand new Formula 2 Martini, who was in fifth position. And that's hard luck, and it shows you how treacherous the conditions still are. You've got to keep on that dry line. Meantime, Beloff's position is in doubt because he has gone straight through the chicane as up in place past Ferte goes Jonathan Palmer. So the two Walt Hondas are now second and third. Mike, Mike Thackwell is second, number eight. Jonathan Palmer is in third position. In fourth place is Alain Ferte in the Black Mara, number five. There he is. Stefan Beloff is in doubt. Yes, clean and simple there. Jonathan Palmer probably came out of Cops, the preceding corner a bit quicker, got a run at Ferte right in his slipstream, came up the inside line. Ferte not really shutting the door too much there. Ferte knowing it's a long race, he's new at this Formula 2 game. Let's follow Jonathan Palmer maybe for a while and see how he's going. There is Jonathan Palmer in third. Very important race to Jonathan Palmer. He made a fantastic name for himself in the British Formula One Championship, which he won with consummate ease in 1981. Moved up to Formula Two last year to drive the Rort Honda. Had a very poor season. And since he is aiming, of course, for Formula One stardom, he has to do well this year. And here he is in third position, followed by Ferte in the Maurer, followed in fifth place by Beloff in the Maurer. Then there's a long gap. The first five are fairly close together. In sixth place now, it is Christian Danner in the march. And in the next position, it is Philippe Strife in the AGS, the only AGS car in this race, in southwest France. And we are on lap six out of 47 as we look at number five, 28-year-old Alain Ferté from Falaise where there was so much hideous fighting during World War II. Now, Ferte was held back in Formula 3 last year, but, and there's Gabbiani. Now, now let's have a lead. With Gabbiani nearly losing the car, he's obviously driving at 10 tenths to try and build up a lead. And you can see the course here is drying out, whereas on other parts of the Silverstone circuit, 2.93 miles long, the water is being held more and is therefore more slippery. Now, that's the, the lead that uh, Gabbiani has got over Packwell. There is the lead that Packwell has over Palmer and Palmer over Ferte. As Gabbiani goes through with bags of wheel spin to complete his sixth lap. And Gabbiani now is leading by 6.7 seconds. And he's leading number nine, Mike Thackwell, who in the third Formula Two race of 1981 in the Rolls Honda broke his left heel, as a result of which he was out for most of the season, as a result of which he lost his Rolls Honda drive, as a result of which he had to make do with very inadequate machinery last year, but he's lost none of his talent, he's got his fitness back, he was second fastest in practice, and he's well on his way. Yes, it's interesting there, Murray, you talk about Mike Thackwell. Last year he ran in a private team, and it is interesting to note that the first six places now, there we have them, the first six places are filled by the three works teams. There's two works Maurers, two works Royal Condors, and two works March BMWs. But yes. uh, certainly you need to be in a works team. Mike Thackwell back in a works team with the best of equipment available and really showing he's one of the best drivers. The lap record is 
1.19.1. Dave Scott's fastest lap in practice was 1.16.9, and that's Kenny Atchison's car, number 17, the Maurer. And uh, I'll be able to give you a time on Beppe Gabbiani, who completes a lap now, 1 minute 32.6. So that is a speed of 114 miles an hour, as makes no, as little as makes no difference, and is nearly 20 miles an hour below the lap record, and over 20 miles an hour below the fastest time in practice. That is how much the wet track is slowing everybody up. There's Beloff. Now, we saw Beloff go through the chicane, and we're wondering, therefore, whether or not he's going to be uh, not disqualified, but penalised. It's more than likely. So we have to regard Beloff's uh, position, which is with... Yes, Beloff has a time penalty. So there he is. There is the German who won last year here, his first Formula 2 race, and subsequently went on to win his second Formula 2 race at Hockenheim. He has a time penalty, and uh, we're just checking on exactly how much that time penalty is while Beppe Gabbiani is on his winning way. Meantime, there is the battle for third position between number eight, Jonathan Palmer, in the Rolt Honda V6, chased by number five, Alain Ferte, in the German Maurer with the BMW four-cylinder engine built under the aegis and sponsorship of the German soft drinks magnate Willy Maurer. Here's, here's Beppe Gabbiani completing his eighth lap, 1 minute 31.37, so he's, he's, he's going a bit quicker as Thackwell goes through in second place, and the gap between Thackwell there, and when you look back, you will see Jonathan Palmer is about three seconds. So it's starting to develop into a scrap between the two Rolt Hondas of Ron Torenek. And incidentally, as the cars go over that rise from Cops on their way to uh, Maggots and Beckett's, you'll be able to look under the cars and you can actually see the skirts which are now missing from the Formula One Grand Prix cars. That is Belloff. And that is Dave Scott fighting his way up through the field after a quite dreadful start which threw away all the advantage that he had got as a result of a superb drive in practice. He's in 18th position at the moment, having started in pole position. And number 34 there is Roberto Del Castello in the March 832 with the BMW Heidegger engine. He's an Italian and he has, as you can see, spun out of the race. He's going to have a push back onto it, the circuit. As Scott comes through, chased by Fulvio Balabio, who seems to have regained the circuit, which means to say that it could well have been Joe Gartner, his teammate who was out in the earlier stages. There's Scott. And there is Gabbiani. So Gabbiani is almost about to... Well, he, he's, cat, he's caught up to Dave Scott. I don't think he'll be able to lap Dave because Dave will be going pretty quickly as numbers 21, Balabio and, 20, and uh, 25, Chauvet go through. There is... Now we'll be able to see how fast Betty Gabbiani, number one, the race leader on his 10th lap out of 47, is going in comparison with the pole position man Dave Scott, Dave Scott driving in his first Formula 2 race against the very experienced Gabbiani. There's Scott. Behind him, 24, is Gartner. And past Balabio goes Gabbiani. That's the race leader. Very interesting that the livery of Well, there you have bad back markers. Joe Gartner possibly thinking at such an early stage in the race that this is someone coming up to overtake him, and he's just not letting him through. Uh, Gabbiani having big problems with Joe Gartner. Joe Gartner cannot believe probably it's the race leader lapping him at such an early stage in the race. And, of course, Gabbiani there in the chicane entry period. He couldn't risk getting onto the very wet part of the track and overtake him. There he just... 
points at Joe Garter and says, look in your mirrors, boy. Pepe Gabbiani, of course, is not a man to tangle with. Ah, oh, yes, another Italian gesture to uh, Joe Gartner as he goes away from him. He's not a man to tangle with because he's not only an extremely well-built specimen himself, but being an extremely wealthy young man, he has the most frightening Italian bodyguard who moves around with him everywhere and brooks no opposition from anybody. And between the two of them, they put on a pretty good front. Now, I was saying that uh, the livery on Gabbiani's car is exactly the same as that of Corrado Fabi last year. And Corrado Fabi was the European Formula 2 champion of 1982, the brother of Teo Fabi. There's Scott. And now Dave Scott, the pole position holder, with after his bad start and struggling to get a rhythm, looks as though he is indeed going to be gobbled up by the roll oil march of race leader Betty Gabbiani, who is on lap 11 with, uh, therefore... There's Tassin, Thierry Tassin to go in the, the end of this. Tassin off. Well, Thierry Tassin was well up in practice. Indeed, he was fifth fastest, and this will be a very bitter pill for him. He actually led this race last year and uh, finished in second place and was excluded due to a technicality. Now, here is Scott on the right. Pepe Gabbiani there, not risking that inside line for Cox. That first corner where they are now is very wet indeed. Gabbiani just leaving a little bit later, being sensible, being not so Italian, and uh, overtaking now on the easier dry part of the track. Poor Dave Scott. Uh, rubbing salt into the wound, really, after his pole position. I think what Peter Gethin must have said, actually, was think like an Englishman and drive like an Italian. Because Gabbiani is certainly doing that. He's driving a very cool race, but uh, with a lot of brio as well. So Dave Scott has now been lapped by the leader as Thierry Tassin disconsolately walks away. He's pinning so much onto this season because... Like all these Formula 2 drivers, he is desperately anxious to get into Formula 1. And the 1983 Formula 2 season was his big chance. The leader, number one, Betty Gabbiani. He is on lap 12. Still a long, long way to go. With Packwell in second place, Palmer in third position. Ferte is still in fourth place. Danner, Christian Danner is moving up through the field now. Uh, Jonathan Palmer there, quite a bit closer now. There, Gabbiana coming through the chicane. Dave Scott has been lapped. Now we wait for Fatquell there with Palmer right behind him. So Palmer's now closed up on Fatquell. Ferte and Stefan Beloff not really been dropped by the Royal Tondas. And visually, I've got a feeling these four are all catching the race leader, Bappy Gabbiani. And for that, we must get onto the stopwatches and see what's happening. Well, we will be able to see, because the gap between Betty Gabbiani when he started this lap, there he is, and the battle between these two Rolt Hondas of the second place man, number nine, Mike Backwell, and number eight, his teammate, Jonathan Palmer, was 5.96 seconds. And Backwell surges past Dave Scott, now, I'm a bit mystified with this Dave Scott business because Dave actually likes the wet more than most drivers and was looking forward to driving on his particular tyres. Yes, Mario, although uh, being in the same car as race leader of Epic Abiani, both in March 822s, I thought Jonathan Palmer slowed dramatically. Mid-corner... Palmer's missing. Where's Palmer? Palmer's missing. Fackwell's by himself. There he is. Jonathan Palmer has slowed and is out of the race. What... Bitter luck, having got up to third position, right on the tail of his teammate, Mike Fackwell. Jonathan Palmer looking for better luck in 1983 than he had in 1982. So, on lap 17, out of 47, as we look at the two German Maurers on their different makes of time, scrapping for third position behind Mike Fackwell, who is second. It is still in the lead, Beppe Gabbiani, by some seven and a half seconds. Backwell, Ferte fell off. Christian Danner, the West German driver from Munich in the march, in fifth position, and that's it! That's the, now, as they come up alongside Palmer's car, 
that number 25 is Pierre Chauvet. The man he hit was Fulvio Bellavio. So it looks as though Chauvet, yes, he's off the circuit now, and Bellavio will be in trouble too. And there's going to be precious few cars left in this race because number 16 there is Frank Jelinski. Frank Jelinski's car out of the race. Yes, a, a back marker there, Chauvet, one of the slower men in the race, slightly inexperienced. He gets out wide, X in the corner, putting the power down. He gets crossed up and just cannons into uh, Balabio, who hits Yelinski. Yelinski, the fastest of this three, he was probably lapping them both. Jonathan Palmer, who you see standing trying to resuscitate his Rolt Honda, must have had a quick prayer and kept his head down. I don't think he knows what's about to hit him until about now. Now, Fete is closing right up. He's going to challenge. He's in a good position to get Pipe back. Well, he only does it. Straight past. Yes, very nice. He's still trying to get around the corner, but uh, he got through all right. He went a bit wide on the exit. So obviously, he'd come down the inside, break later than Thackwell. Thackwell's having a look back again. Well, that was a very nice overtaking there because the Honda's a very powerful engine, but Fete got in the right position he's just come out of the slipstream now and he just left his brake in a little bit quick later and uh, I think quite surprised Mike Thackwell who wasn't expecting it there here now he's just sliding wide sliding away from the apex but he's just got enough grip if he'd gone out another half car width onto that wet patch he might have been in trouble now they're into the hangar straight this is fifth gear and uh, They'll be doing about 10,000 RPM down here, a speed of close on 160 miles an hour as they approach Stowe Corner, back into fourth gear about here. 150 miles an hour in absolutely dry conditions, knocking back five miles an hour. And uh, look at the flapping skirt on the left there of Joe Gartner's car, number 24, the red and white spirit that is leading this bunch. Joe Gart there you see on the left side of the car, the right as you look at it, the skirt seems to have torn away and will therefore be affecting the downforce and the ground adhesion of the Spirit BMW. Now the Spirit is the team that Thierry boots and, and off goes Ferte. That's Ferte in second place going off with Chauvet and he magnificently recovers but meantime, fact, and he's into the pits meantime, fact, now this is completely thrown the race wide open because back into second place has got Mike Thackwell and look at Ferte going into the pits look at this he's destroyed the near side front suspension the left front suspension on Ferte's car as he rashly tried to take and lap Chauvet which was quite unnecessary but then he knew that he had got Thackwell right behind him and his race is run and he is not at all pleased Alain Ferte, don't talk to me, he says, I don't want to know anything about it. I'm going into the garage, I'm going to mind my own business, and Mr Chauvet, his Gartner, is not any happier either. So that's two more cars. Let's look at that again. Well, there really, Ferte was a bit over-ambitious. He tried to do what Gabbiani wisely didn't do. He tried to outbreak Joe Gartner while lapping him on the wet line. Joe Gartner there, he's, he's, he's OK, he's driving into the chicane on his dry line and all of a sudden we're going to see here comes Ferte but he's on the wet bit he's trying to lap him he locks up his brakes and clobbers into the back of Joe Gartner's car sending them both spinning around and off and out of the race it's uh, Ferte was very cross he seemed to be when he got back to the pits afterwards obviously thinking Gartner had blocked him but really he could have waited till after the chicane to do that maneuver his inexperience meaning he went for the quicker time to overtaking on the wet and it didn't come off and you have to feel very sorry indeed for the unfortunate Joe Gartner who was taken off this extremely amiable Austrian who with Sho who with Chauvet has managed to raise the money to buy the spirits driven by Johansson and Bootsen last year. Now we're looking at the second place man on the right. Stefan Belov is challenging him. Now Mike Thackwell doesn't seem to be offering all that much opposition to Belov driving past. And therefore I would hazard a guess that Thackwell can conceivably know that Belov has been penalised. 
Beppe Gabbiani goes through the Woodcote chicane to complete his 44th lap, start his 45th, and sensationally there behind him, Stefan Belloff, the German in the Maurer, who won last year, has fought his way through a field which has been diminished car by car to only nine runners, and he's now up into second place. And the story of this race, which is over 47 laps, and they are now on lap 45, is that Belloff had a 10-second penalty for overshooting the chicane at Woodcote in an early lap, and he's got to catch the man that you see on the right of the screen, which is Betty Gabbiani, number one, the 26-year-old Italian from Milan, ex-Formula One driver, and get 10 seconds clear of him to win the race. Gabbiani is in a march powered by a BMW, and this is the make of car that has won more Formula Two races than any other by a long, long way. Belloff is in a German but British made Maurer with a German BMW engine. They are coming up to complete lap 45 in this 47 lap race. And all through the race, we've had car after car flying off the circuit safely, I am glad to say, because we know of no real, if any, injuries. And now Beloff is right behind Gabbiani as they are on the penultimate, the last lap but one. But just listen to the drivers that have got out of this race due to the fact that they all started on slick tyres, which are ideal for dry road surface conditions, whereas it was damp and they have not had enough tyre adhesion. Kenny Atchison's gone out, Mansilla has gone out, Tassin has gone out, Philly Valio has gone out, Thomas Kaiser, Jonathan Palmer went out, not because he went off the circuit, but in third position when apparently he had engine trouble with his Walt Honda V6. Pierre Chauvet went out, Bellabio went out, Jelinski, Del Costello, Gartner, Ferte, and Dave Scott, who is in pole position, and now they are on the 46th lap. Well, Gabbiani now, he may, may even let him pass. I don't know if he knows the situation. He doesn't seem to be weaving around the circuit, so we assume that Michael's Onyx Racing Works March team have told Beppe the situation. Gabbiani now, this will be his first single-seater win since 1977, amazingly. And uh, I expect he's enjoying these last... Belloff suddenly slowing there. Gone out of picture. Is he going into the pits? Where's he gone? A very sudden drop back by Belloff. Is he out of fuel? He slowed right down. Belloff's run out of petrol, or his motor's gone. Another sensational development on literally the last lap. And that means to say that Mike Thackwell, the New Zealand driver of the Rolt Honda V6, moves up into second position. Watch for him. The white and blue Rolt with the red helmet. And there is Mike Thackwell who's going to have a superb second place after a dreadful 1982 season when he suffered the whole year from the after effects of a broken heel and a broken-hearted Stefan Beloff gets out of his Maurer knowing that he's lost second place for sure. Ferte, Alain Ferte, his teammate, pushed off Joe Gardner earlier on and went out of the race, but here is Beppe Gabbiani from Milan on his way to winning the Marlborough Daily Express Formula 2 International Trophy race of 1983, which is round one of the FIA Formula 2 European Championship, and yet another win for the brilliant March and BMW and Michelin tyre combination which has proved virtually impossible to beat for a long, long time. Gabbiani has won the international trophy. And is he happy? Indeed he is. That, he says, is for all the misery that I'm absolutely delighted. The power fist, and this is Mike Thackwell. Another fine drive and a well-deserved reward. Second place for the New Zealander, 21 years old, and threw into third position then behind Thackwell now will come Christian Danner in the BMW, followed in fourth place by Phoenix Strike, and in fifth position by Lamberto Leone. There is Danner. Christian Danner then coming through 
to finish behind Mike Thackwell as he comes underneath the bridge and touring across the line now yet another one of them it's a good thing this race was not a couple of laps longer because Oscar Lorori has just toured in and you'll see him I'm sure as Christian Danner goes past it there is Danner finishing and there is Lorori I would imagine having run out of petrol so a win then for Beppe Gabbiani from Mike Thackwell with Christian Danner in third position March BMW wins, Ralt Honda second, March BMW in third position, and in fourth place will be the AGS of Philippe Strife, ahead of fifth place man Lamberto Leone's March BMW. Well, I said the International Trophy of 1983 would be interesting and exciting. It has been both those things, and uh, it augurs well for the second round at Thruxton. Well, last year's winner, Stefan Beloff, despite only completing 46 laps, was eventually awarded fourth place.